Nikolay's steel wall is a Soviet army box set designed for the enemy at the Gates book for mid-war Flames of War. It serves as a starter set to get a new Soviet player started in Flames of War, or as a basis for an existing player to build up an Eastern Front army. I'd like to thank Blitz and Pieces for supplying this box set for review. Be sure to check out their online store in the links below. They're offering Fog of War viewers a discount code on version 4 Flames of War products, so you can grab a bargain. More details on that later. Let's look inside the box and see what we get. There's a mix of units here. It has three T-34s, three heavy KV series tanks and four 76mm guns. These are all in plastic. The box set also contains two plastic tank commander sprues, four plastic gun crew sprues, two decal sheets and 11 unit cards. There's also a mini Flames of War version 4 softcover rulebook included for new players. So there's plenty here making this set pretty good value. Let's have a look at the plastic and we can consider if these units work together to make a useful force. Let's start with the T-34. This kit isn't new. The T-34 was one of the early Battlefront plastics. It's still a good kit with the 1943 pattern 76mm turret as well as the later 85mm one. There are enough parts on the sprue to build both turrets. Tracks are one piece with good detail. The kit has the rounded wartime fenders as well as the post-war square ones, and there are extra fuel tanks, stowage and guns for the different variants. The sprue even has the 100mm gun for the SU-100 and the 57mm gun for the T-34-57, as well as options to mount a flamethrower in place of the hull machine gun. All good for the spares box. The 85mm barrel looks a bit bendy on this one, sometimes a problem with this kit. However, this kit also has an additional sprue with another turret to enable you to build the T-34 early 76mm version in service in 1941-42. This almost gives you enough parts to build all three turret variants. You'd only be missing another 76mm gun barrel. It wouldn't take much to scratch build one of these from the 57mm barrel. T-34 was initially fitted with the L11 76mm gun in a two-man turret. This gun was slightly less powerful than the F-34 gun in development, but was fitted as a stopgap measure to early production tanks. Built with sloping armour, wide tracks, a decent engine and a relatively powerful gun, T-34 was a nasty surprise to the Panzerwaffe when they encountered them during the early stages of Operation Barbarossa. However, initially they were only available in small numbers, and the T-34 design had some issues. These included poor visibility and crude gun sights and optics. The quality of the steel used in the armour was variable and the design was cramped. Even when the more capable F-34 gun was fitted in 1941, the small two-man turret was an issue. The tanks lacked radios and the overworked commander was forced to act as gunner as well. Despite these shortcomings, the T-34 was an effective design. A larger three-man turret was adopted in 1943. Having a dedicated gunner freed up the commander and the widespread adoption of tank radios made T-34 even more effective. Another new turret design allowed T-34 to be upgunned with an 85mm gun. This version of the tank soldiered on to the end of the war and beyond. Serving in Korea, Vietnam and the Middle East, T-34 is still in service with some countries today. The only issue with building the T-34 early is the round engine access cover on the hull. This was square in the early tanks, not round like the later variants. You can see why Battlefront didn't supply a whole new hull just for this. If it is an issue for you, maybe cover the engine deck with stowage. Next we have the KV heavy tank in plastic. Here's the sprue. This kit's new in plastic, so let's have a good look. There are two turrets here, the larger one for the KV-1 and the smaller one for the smaller and lighter KV-1S model. There are three different gun mantlets supplied, one for the KV-1, one for the KV-1S, and this one for the KV-8 flamethrower variant. There are also two different engine decks. The more angled lower profile one is for the KV-1S. Tracks are one piece, and you can see the room on the sprue around these parts to allow semi-slide moulds to wrap around to mould in some of the tread detail. This looks like a pretty simple kit to put together but it has good options and the detail and sharpness of detail on the mouldings is great. 
the KV series of tanks were heavy tank designs. Named for Klimen Voroshilov, then Soviet Defence Commissar, the KV's heavy armour protection made it immune to most German anti-tank guns at the time. About 500 KV-1 tanks were in service when Barbarossa began. Even a single KV could hold up a German advance until a weapon like the 8.8cm flat gun or an infantry assault by pioneers with explosives could knock it out. The thick armour and the larger three-man turret gave the KV-1 the edge over early T-34s. However, it was difficult to steer, and at 45 tonnes it was underpowered and difficult to manoeuvre. To combat some of these issues, the KV-1S was developed. The main aim was to reduce weight, so this variant had thinner armour and a smaller turret. While these changes helped, it also negated the tank's main advantages over the T-34 medium tank. While a few 85mm armed KV-85s were produced, development switched to the new IS series heavy tank design. KV production ceased at the end of 1943. Now let's look at the ZIS-3 gun. This is a lovely looking sprue with a minimum of parts. The only real option here is the two different guns. The longer barrel is the 57mm ZIS-2 anti-tank gun, while the shorter gun with the double muzzle brake is the 76mm ZIS-3. Again, the casting and detail here is just beautiful. The guns get hard plastic crews. There are four of these crew sprues in the box. Hard plastic figures will make a lot of people happy. Developed from the M1939 gun, the 76mm M1942 was simplified, using castings and stampings to reduce costs and manpower to produce. The muzzle brake was added to reduce recoil and to enable the new guns to use a lighter carriage. After a short acceptance trial, the design was accepted into service in 1942 as the Divisional Field Gun Model 1942. More than 100,000 guns were produced. This gun was also the main armament for the SU-76 assault gun. These guns are very versatile. They can be employed as artillery, giving fire support to suppress infantry and bombard strongpoints. They can also be used in the anti-tank role with an anti-tank of 9 and 3 plus firepower. Pretty decent for mid-war. So these are the units in the box set. You get cards for the T-34 early as well as the KV-1 and KV-1S heavy tanks. You can also field the OT-34 and KV-8 flamethrower tanks. Round this out with the ZIS-3 guns as either howitzers or in the anti-tank role. There are a lot of options here. You can go tank and AT heavy, or you can use the flamethrowers or use the guns as artillery to deal with infantry and enemy guns. Here are the enemy at the gates lists on forces of war. Given the units in the box, your best option seems to be fielding a mixed tank battalion. Mixed tank battalions don't have a formation commander. This means you can field the tanks as a compulsory minimum strength KV-1 or KV-1S company and a compulsory minimum T-34 early company. The guns can be taken as either 57 or 76mm guns in a heavy tank killer company or as a 76mm artillery battery. That's probably the only legal force you can field without additional units. But there are plenty of expansion options. You can add Valentine, Stuart or T-60 tank companies to the battalion. There are also integrated options for infantry with SMG or Hero SMG companies, as well as an 82mm mortar company. There are a myriad of battalion support options including flamethrower tanks, armoured cars, anti-tank guns, Katusha rocket artillery, AAMG platoons, 122mm artillery, or even IL-2 Sturmovic ground attack aircraft. Formation support adds even more choices to the list. There are plenty of tank options from T-60s through to M3 Lee and Churchill tank companies. Infantry options range from penal companies through to hero rifle companies, and even a storm group. Reconnaissance platoons and armoured reconnaissance platoons with white scout cars can give your force eyes and ears. So the initial list options straight from the box are a bit limited, but this product is intended to be a solid starting point that will be added to. Given the number of options, you get plenty of choices on how you grow the force by adding units depending on your own preferences and playstyle. Pairing this starter box with a box of T-34s opens up the T-34 battalion list with the KV-1s in support, or as flamethrowers. Or the tanks and guns here could form the support for an infantry list if you decide to build an infantry formation. 
So again, Battlefront have created a useful starting point for Russians on the Eastern Front with this set. The plastics are of the great quality we expect from Battlefront plastics, and it's good to see the plastic range expanding. Thanks again to Blitz and Pieces for supplying this box set. Their generous support helps make sure this channel can review a range of products, without me having to buy them all out of my own pocket. I said earlier that Blitz and Pieces were offering Fog of War viewers a 10% discount on eligible Flames of War version 4 kits. If you enter the code Fog of War 2019Q1 during checkout, the discount will be applied to your order. The code is valid until March 31st, 2019. If you need some gear, please repay their generous support of this channel by making a purchase.